Speaking Task 1 You will be asked a question about a familiar topic. You will then have 15 seconds to prepare your response, and 45 seconds to speak. Do you prefer to study in the early morning or late at night? Give specific reasons and examples to support your answer. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Speaking Task 2 You will read a short paragraph and then listen to a conversation between two people. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the conversation between two people. What do you think? I don't think we need to change anything. You don't think she's right that it would be easier? Well, I just don't think it's that difficult now. I mean, the library has a really good computer system where you can easily see what they have in their collection, see what's available and what's not. Yeah, you can always look through the titles on the library computers. Right, and you don't even have to have an exact title in mind. You can just look for certain types of movies or movies with certain actors or whatever. Good point. And as far as what she said about the staff, the people who do that work are students who really need the money to pay for books and stuff. True. Plus, I'm sure those students don't get paid that much to do the work, so I don't think it's going to put any strain on the university's budget. The man expresses his opinion about the proposal described in the letter. Briefly summarize the proposal. Then state his opinion about the proposal and explain the reasons he gives for holding that opinion. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep.
Speaking Task 3 You will read a short paragraph about an academic topic then listen to a lecture about it. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the lecture. Globalization has had a profound impact on almost every aspect of human life, including the world of art. We will look at how globalization has influenced art, both positively and negatively, in this lecture. Let us first consider the positive effects of globalization on art. One of the most significant advantages is the increased access to art from all over the world. The Internet and other technological advances have made it easier to share and distribute art across borders. As a result, people are more exposed than ever before to a diverse range of artistic styles and traditions. This has not only broadened our understanding of different cultures, but it has also facilitated cross-cultural dialogue and understanding. Another advantage of globalization for artists is the increased opportunity to showcase their work on a global scale. Artists now have more platforms to display their work and reach a wider audience as more art fairs, exhibitions, and galleries open around the world. This has opened up new avenues for artists to gain recognition, establish a reputation, and advance their careers. To maximize the benefits of globalization on art, while minimizing the negative impacts, we must support artistic integrity and foster a greater understanding and appreciation of art from around the world. What are the positive impacts of globalization on art? Use points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. You will listen to a lecture about an academic topic. After, you will get a question about what you heard. You will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. Now listen to the lecture. 
When people are in difficult situations, sometimes they experience feelings of helplessness or psychological pain. So what do they do? They unconsciously use strategies called defense mechanisms to protect themselves psychologically from their painful emotions. Uh, let's say a woman has a pet dog. She's had this dog for a long time, and he's kept her company and guarded her for years. But one day he runs away. This woman looks everywhere and asks other people if they've seen her dog, but she just can't find him. Now, she feels helpless and sad because she misses her dog, so she'll unconsciously find ways to deal with her painful feelings. One defense mechanism she might use is fantasy. With fantasy, the woman uses her imagination. So instead of just feeling helpless and sad about her lost dog, she invents a happy story in her mind. She might imagine that a, a nice family found him and feeds him, and that he's really happy with them. She'll picture the dog playing, running around, having fun. Because of this fantasy, she doesn't have to feel sad about her dog running away. It's a fantasy. It's not real, but it keeps her pain away. Another defense mechanism she might use is what we call sublimation. Sublimation is different from fantasy because sublimation isn't about pretending. It's about turning negative emotions into something useful, practical. So uh, the woman might start a dog training school. That way, by training dogs, perhaps she can help prevent other people's dogs from running away like hers did. In other words, with sublimation as a defense mechanism, the woman redirects her negative feelings about losing her dog into a positive, constructive activity. Giving points and examples from the talk, describe the two defense mechanisms mentioned by the professor. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep.